Hi everyone, that's me. I've only got five minutes, so we're moving. Hang on. Uh, we're at the Mint uh, in Deakin. We are in the business of making money. Thank you. Thank you. It always goes down well. Uh, more specifically, we're into coins. Um, and we're in a, an industry, Phil. We're a, we're a manufacturer, so we're going to come and talk to you about your hub. Um, but, you know, we're in a, an interesting space where technology is disrupting us massively, obviously. So I get asked two questions all the time. When are you going to get rid of the bloody five cent coin? Not my choice, by the way. And is cash dying? Is cash on the way out? So we're going to discuss the second one today. And we are under attack. We're under attack for some big dogs. Google, BPay, uh, Mastercard, Visa, Apple, PayPal. Some little brands are all after what we do. Uh, and of course, their key message, and they're pretty big companies, is cash is dying, cash is dead. Uh, well, today we're gonna have a look at, really, is it? Um, so the impending death of money. Why do people wanna be in the payment game? You know, it kind of seems like a funny space to be. Uh, apart from making money themselves, we all get a little clip of the ticket on the way through, which is really nice. Um, there's an opportunity to collect an amazing amount of data for some of these companies. So just imagine if you're Google and the sort of metrics you're getting at the moment through your online search engines and other applications, etc., etc. all of a sudden you're in this pay space and you can see where people are spending their money, what on, are there any patterns, uh, how frequent are we, what are the transaction size, and you can slice that however you like and combine it with the other big data you're collecting. Apple the same, Mastercard and Visa card the same. So it's a new frontier to get to understand us a little bit better. Of course, with cash, we don't do that. Uh, we're a little bit old-fashioned. You get it, it says what it's worth on the, on the uh, back of the coin, and then we go. Um, but it's complicated in the sense that it's not an easy solution, and I'm not convinced that any of the big guys have quite cracked the code yet. Thankfully, they're all fighting amongst themselves. But we're going to have a look at why would the customer care? Because, again, coins are, are totally inconvenient, aren't they? Cash is inconvenient. Um, surely we've created a substitute, a better tool. Well, perhaps we have and perhaps we haven't. Certainly e-commerce has forced our hands. Gone are the days where we're sending notes and coins through the mail, although we could probably prop up Australia Post if we did. Um, so online transactions are necessary, of course and cash is no substitute. Bricks and mortar stores, we all tap, I'm sure, we all pay wave. It's a fantastic technology, and it has created a better solution for many customers. But think about it, not everyone has a credit card. Um, kids can't pay by credit card. Um, many people who don't have a roof over their head don't have access to a debit card, or certainly not wearing an Apple Watch and swiping as they wander out of DJs. Um, so really, you know, cash still has a fairly serious role to play in being able to provide a full solution for everyone. It's, it's the ultimate democratic mode of payment. Speaking of which, no one's ever accused me of being sentimental, but I'm happy to start now. Um, we talk about democratisation of information and, and process and policy. Uh, what we do at the Mint with our reserve bank partners who look after notes is we democratise money. Um, there are no barriers. If you've earned it, and if you can find it, it's yours. And if you can, you find someone who wants to trade with you, it's theirs, and you get something back in return. This isn't always the case when we look at other ways of paying. Privacy. We must be hiding something if we want privacy. Well, that's not quite the case. Um, believe it, we're all on Google, we're all Facebook, and we're all doing that, but we know that we're giving our data away. Wouldn't it be nice to have a choice to use cash or an alternative, and choose whether we're going to give our data away or not. Uh, debt is so in right now, it's the, it's the new black. Um, and this is, cash is a wonderful way of teaching young people some good values. If you don't have it, you can't spend it. And in this day and age of information, where you know, we live an aspirational life, everything is, is accessible, um, perhaps looking and, and reflecting upon some of these old values of, Jesus, do I really need that new dress? Do I need a new pair of shoes? Do I need that car? Do I need that extension on the mortgage? 
And then finally, of course, cash is used to fund crime because we're all criminals. Uh, and, and no other mode of payment is, of course. Um, and it's true, there's a lot of cash in, in the black economy. That's not a healthy thing. But, um, of course, there's a lot of other things going on involving new technology, wire transfers, Bitcoin, etc., etc. So cash is hardly guilty. Finally, and I know I've overstayed my welcome, but I'm one of the last speakers. <laughs> I'm allowed. <laughs> and everyone gets a $2 coin to stand. <laughs> Just <laughs> um, Finally today, we, when given the brief, which was stay short, fail, uh, but give people some things to think about, change some perceptions through a conversation. Hopefully you've seen that at the, min at the Mint in Canberra, a small manufacturer, uh, we're producing something that's been around for 3,000 years. Uh, we think we're going to um, coexist with new technology coming into this space. And um, as narrators of the, the nation's history through coins, um, we hope that a few of you can come out and see us uh, when you get a moment. Thank you.